Russia has acquired a new type of weapon that poses an existential threat to the United States. This was the cryptic warning given by U.S. Representative Mike Turner, the Republican head of the House Intelligence Committee. His warning was followed with an appeal for President Joe Biden to immediately declassify all available information on this threat so that the U.S., Congress, and American allies could work together to combat it. The news raced around the world like a firestorm and was quickly met with backlash from both Democrat and Republican lawmakers who condemned Turner's choice of publicly announcing this unnamed threat for needless fear-mongering. Since then, details have emerged on this Russian threat, and while Turner's information was accurate, the threat is significantly less dire than first portrayed. Since Turner's ill-fated tweet or zeet, the new details have emerged revealing that Russia's new weapon is an anti-satellite weapon. This is of significant concern given the U.S. military's overwhelming reliance on satellites for everything from communications to reconnaissance. America has the largest space network in the world, followed by China, and it's this vast constellation of satellites that makes the U.S. military a fast, agile, and highly responsive threat. America's satellites allow it to quickly share intelligence and coordinate the actions of different military units both in the same theater and globally as well as act as relay links for the nation's vast fleet of unmanned aerial ground and sea vehicles. But for all the advantages America's satellite superiority brings, it has been likened to the U.S. having constructed a, quote, exquisite glass house before the invention of the rock. America's satellite infrastructure is extremely vulnerable to rapidly modernizing near-peer opponents like China, who, along with Russia, already fields traditional anti-satellite weapons in the forms of missiles and lasers. While the Space Force is working to harden satellite infrastructure, these platforms are inherently vulnerable and difficult to protect from the range of threats they face, which can be as simple as just slowing them down enough so that they decay and fall out of orbit. Now Russia has upped the ante in the most Russian and ultimately dumb way possible. Traditional means of attacking satellites require pinpoint precision and only work on one satellite at a time. With over 8,000 satellites in orbit and the U.S.'s ability to piggyback off civilian satellites, if you truly wanted to cripple America's space-based network, you'd need to destroy way too many satellites at once. This is where Russia's weapon comes into play, and the threat it poses is significant enough that Representative Turner urged other members of Congress to come to a classified briefing to review all available intelligence on it. While details remain classified, it's strongly suspected that the weapon Russia is working on is meant to disable U.S. satellites with a massive EMP, or electromagnetic pulse. EMPs can be generated with specialized equipment. The U.S., for example, has successfully tested a weapon that can be used as a missile and can launch pinpoint EMP attacks to shut down electronic equipment in specific areas, even targeting specific floors of a building. The electromagnetic threat is serious for modern economies and their militaries given that every facet of our lives and military warfighting potential is defined by the widespread adoption of electronics. By frying circuits due to overloads of electromagnetic energy, EMP weapons can effectively destroy enemy equipment without having to physically attack it, with the fringe benefit of not causing any human casualties. It's unknown if Russia has the capability to build a device capable of generating a large enough EMP blast on its own to cover a wide area or if the weapon in question is similar to the secretive U.S. EMP weapon that can blast specific areas with electromagnetic radiation. What is known is that an EMP blast is easily produced by a weapon that Russia mastered long ago and is plentiful in its arsenal, the nuclear bomb. Upon detonation, a nuclear weapon releases a massive, if short-lived, pulse of electromagnetic energy that can cover an area as much as 1,000 square kilometers in orbit. This gives the Russian nuke a lot of real estate where it can destroy many American satellites all at once. While the skin of a standard communication satellite can withstand a significant amount of electromagnetic energy, antennas and apertures create openings through which EMP energy can penetrate into the interior. On the ground, many vehicles designed to operate on a nuclear battlefield are shielded from EMPs, but it's not known how possible it is to add that same amount of protection for satellites in orbit, or how cost-effective that would be. Every additional pound of payload needing to be placed in orbit equals thousands of dollars in launch costs and shortens the life of a satellite by consuming more fuel. It wouldn't take much for Russia to field an effective EMP weapon of this fashion, though U.S. intelligence has affirmed that Russia has no such weapon operational at the moment. Despite social media's collective freakout about Russian nukes hanging over the world's head, there's no indication that this is the case, at least yet. Even so, all it would really take for Russia to suddenly feel this capability is sticking a nuke on their rocket and sending it into high enough orbit. 
something easily accomplished given their space launch capabilities. The question is, would Russia actually do this? And two years ago the answer would have been a confident no. However, recent events have proven that with Vladimir Putin, the sky is literally not the limit for his stupidity. Thanks to the UN's treaty on outer space, no nation has ever placed weapons of mass destruction in orbit, despite an incredible incentive to do so. Even before satellites were a concern, placing nukes in space still provided a decisive strategic advantage, as it would cut the delivery time by more than half and significantly reduce the odds of interception. There would be no launch vehicle to intercept in the boost or pre-separation phase, and there would be little if any warning of a pending attack. With traditional ICBMs, Americans could enjoy anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour of warning of a Soviet attack, depending on the launch complex and the target. With satellites hanging overhead, Americans would get mere minutes of warning to change into their costumes for a global fallout LARP experience. By dramatically reducing warning and flight time, interception would also become significantly more difficult. This treaty held for decades, and even through the worst parts of the Cold War, but thanks to Putin it might go up in flames. But would Russia really do this, and how bad would it really be? In an effort to understand the effects and the uses of nuclear weapons, the United States performed a series of high-altitude tests as part of Operation Fishbowl. By 1958, it had already conducted six high-altitude tests, but a lack of proper instrumentation left U.S. scientists with more questions than answers. In 1962, the U.S. set about to conduct its largest high-altitude test yet, with a 1.4 to 1.45 megaton weapon set to go off 250 miles over the Earth. The resulting explosion ended up causing significantly more effects than first predicted. Aside from blowing the pants off every UFO in the vicinity, the explosion resulted in a brief second sun seen across the Pacific. The EMP blast, which had been predicted, turned out to be much larger than expected and was so overpowering that instruments used to document the explosion back down on Earth were overwhelmed. In Hawaii, almost a thousand miles away from the detonation, 300 streetlights were burned out, burglar alarms were set off, and damage was caused to the electrical grid. A microwave link for the local telephone company was damaged enough to shut down all phone calls between the island of Kauai and the other islands. The blast damaged nine satellites of the barely three dozen in orbit at the time, including Britain's first satellite ever. The explosion also created new belts of radiation around the Earth, while having an effect on the existing Van Allen radiation belt, which helped shield the Earth from charged particles hurled out by the Sun. The results were shocking to both the US and Soviet observers, who had significantly underestimated the power and the size of the EMP generated in space. Its effect on orbiting satellites was of serious concern, and it soon became clear that space-based nuclear weapons could pose a deadly risk to future military efforts. The Soviets would also conduct their own space-based tests, albeit at lower altitudes, resulting in damage to electronics on the ground and the power plant. An entirely new use for nuclear weapons had been confirmed, knocking out vast swaths of an enemy's modern electronic infrastructure. Since then, we've only become more vulnerable to space-based EMPs. Early vacuum tube technology was actually very resistant to the effects of EMPs, but semiconductors used today are extremely vulnerable. As an anti-satellite weapon, an EMP blast would be particularly effective for low Earth orbit satellites. At higher orbits that sit above the protection of the Earth's electromagnetic field, satellites need to be hardened against charged particles in space. However, at lower Earth orbits and snugly within the warm magnetic embrace of the Earth, manufacturers take advantage of this protection by not including hardening, which would end up adding weight and cost. It's not just electronically fried satellites that are the problem, though, as there is the obvious destruction caused by the blast itself. This would actually be significantly mitigated in space, as there is little medium to carry a shockwave. But the threat to nearby satellites could cause a runaway destruction event known as Kessler Syndrome. This happens when enough space debris is generated that it, in turn, starts destroying other space assets, which only adds to the debris cloud. Eventually, there's so much space debris orbiting the Earth that it becomes impossible to predict all of its orbits, and thus spaceflight becomes too hazardous, and it could take anywhere from decades to centuries for space debris to deorbit on its own, leaving mankind trapped on this rock with Elon Musk. The question is then, is Russia dumb enough to actually do this? The immediate consideration is that putting any weapon of mass destruction into orbit would break the UN's treaty on outer space. In retaliation, other nations who already feel WMDs would put their own nukes in orbit as a deterrent to being attacked themselves. However, with the taboo broken, the non-WMD weaponization of space would truly begin and exponentially increase the risk of a Kessler Syndrome event, 
All because Putin was sad about losing in Ukraine. And that is what this new anti-satellite weapon is all about. Predictable to the point of utter banality, every time Russia suffers a major setback in Ukraine or the West is on the verge of a new major arms shipment, Russia rolls out the old nuclear saber and starts rattling it. The strategy is effective at causing Westerners to shy away from supporting Ukraine and creating much historical hesitancy to provide arms in the two years since the wars began. With the US Congress close to a deal that would open up billions in funding for Ukraine, news of this test is likely yet another temper tantrum meant to deter the American public. There's also no reason to believe that Representative Mike Turner leaked this info on this threat on purpose. While he himself has been a strong proponent of Ukraine aid, Trump allies within the Republican Party, like Speaker and election denier Mike Johnson, have purposely sabotaged funding deals to create issues for the former president to run on. Turner, frustrated by the months of stalling on a funding deal, is believed to have released this intelligence to spur on action against Russia and get funding for Ukraine passed. But would Russia actually use this weapon? The thing about a massive EMP blast is that it's impossible to control. At a high enough altitude, ground effects could be prevented or seriously minimized. But Russia's space-based infrastructure would also be in jeopardy. Nuclear weapon-generated EMP blasts don't differentiate between American or Chinese satellites and the potatoes with duct tape cell phones that Russia probably has in space. Everything would be at risk of destruction. And it's the inclusion of foreign parties and vast amounts of civilian infrastructure that makes it all but a certainty that Russia would never use this weapon. China, who now has the second largest space network, would be furious over any uncontrolled anti-satellite weapon used in space, as would the rest of the world. Russia would become an even greater international pariah than before, losing any remaining partner that it enjoys today. The incident may even prompt military action by China against Russian forces out of fear of further nuclear escalation or adventurism. In the end, such a weapon is a strategic deterrent more than a weapon, a reason to deter an opponent from attacking you due to the incredible cost of doing so. Now go check out Russia's nuke targets or click this other video instead.